we are analyzing the structure of speech sounds, which are the building blocks of language. You could say, oh, we use the written symbols to write language and those are the building blocks of language. No, language was primarily spoken, so the building blocks were sounds. Thousands of years later, we try to represent them in writing. So let's just stick to spoken language, which is the most exciting part. Last week, we did analyze sounds. We dealt with the concepts of amplitude and loudness. So today, what I'm doing is we're going to take a look at frequency and pitch. Um, so we did introductory phonetics, for example. Now we are doing a higher level of phonetics. So we are actually getting into the concepts that describe sounds. But as we discussed last week, this becomes a bit tricky because you think you're doing acoustic phonetics, but suddenly you're interacting with auditory phonetics and vice versa. I will try to clarify what sub-branch of phonetics or domain of phonetics we are in. Let's start with frequency. What is frequency? Obviously, it's a very frequent word in common language. Frequency, frequent, frequently. But in the technical sense, when we're talking about sounds, speech sounds in particular or sounds in general, Frequency is the number of times a sound wave occurs in a unit of time, or in other words, the number of cycles per second. So now we are suddenly jumping into sound waves. What is a sound wave? So if you throw a rock in a pond, you will see that the rock will initiate a series of waves in the water. The ripples, the water will start moving up and down in circles outwardly from where you threw the rock so that is something that you can physically see but when you speak when you produce a sound a similar thing happens but you don't see it in the air but unlike water it's not visible think of every word you utter as a rock that you throw in in the air and then it will initiate a series of ripples or waves until those waves reach the ears or ear of the hearer. So speech sounds propagate in the form of waves, similarly to the ripples that arise when one throws a rock into the water. So those waves, every going up and down, think of it as a wave. So frequency is the number of cycles of wave per unit of time. Usually the unit of time is second. And frequency is measured in hertz. A frequency of one hertz means that there is one complete cycle per second. A frequency of 100 hertz means that there are 100 complete cycles of the wave per second. The term frequency is used in the study of the physics of sound because sound is not just a speech sound, it could be any sound, but it's also used in acoustic phonetics, which is the sub-branch of phonetics that analyzes sounds objectively, and which is the closest sub-branch of phonetics to the physics of sound. Increase in the frequency of a sound of a sound correlates with the auditory sensation of a higher pitch. So you could say frequency is acoustic phonetics, pitch is auditory phonetics. This is a basic or an ideal sound wave. It's a simple wave. As you can see, all the cycles are similar. The unit of time is second. It takes 10 seconds for a wave to make a full cycle. And then the second wave is also 10 seconds. The third wave is also 10 seconds. That's why I call this an ideal sine wave. It's like a simple wave. But in real life, sound waves or even the water ripples of water are not like this. They usually start big and they end up becoming small and disappearing. You see, on the vertical axis, we have amplitude, which is the height of the wave, which we discussed earlier in the previous video. So I'm going to present a second picture. You see, it shows one cycle, what a cycle means. So the number of cycles is, uh, when you say 100 hertz, it means 100 cycles, usually per second. So the horizontal axis is time. The vertical axis is amplitude. So this is a sine wave again, with each wave occurring at regular intervals, hence generating the same pattern over and over again. 
So now we, we are getting into language. How do we actually produce these waves? They take place, they start in the vocal folds. As the vocal folds move, they generate these waves. Now, when you do that, then you have pitch, which is an attribute of auditory sensation of sounds in which the sound is perceived on a scale of low to high. It is an auditory phonetic feature that corresponds to a certain extent to the acoustic feature of frequency. So there's no direct or parallel relationship between frequency and pitch because there are other factors at work. You need to know that pitch is measured in mels. Pitch is used in phonology to understand word distress, intonation, and tone. Pitch is a percept in auditory phonetics, not a physical feature in acoustic phonetics. So it's more of a cognitive thing than a physical thing. Pitch is an auditory property that makes it possible for a listener to scale a sound from low to high without considering the acoustic properties. The higher the rate of vocal fold vibration, the higher the pitch. However, the relationship is not that straightforward since our hearing works in a complex way in terms of processing air pressure, airflow, and vocal fold vibration. So there's all these factors at work. Pitch has a not linear logarithmic relationship with fundamental frequency, which I will examine later. Pitch is therefore generated by F0. F0 is fundamental frequency. The higher the F0, the fundamental frequency, the higher the pitch, and low pitch is caused by low fundamental frequency. This sound wave, which looks irregular, so it's not a simple sine wave. It shows 10 and a half cycles in one tenth of a second. This is based on natural speech. So you need to know that natural speech does not come in sine waves or simple sound waves, such as the ones I presented earlier. Natural speech is generated in a combination of different kinds of waves, that is complex waves, which is a complex mix of different frequencies. Usually when we analyze the speech, we have things that we call spectrograms. Here, there's like two sections. At the top, there is actually the image, the spectrogram. At the bottom, there is a sound waves based off of that. If you look at them carefully, you will see that they're parallel to each other. There's a lot of white space, which is like empty, but the black, the dark parts are the actual sounds and the waves are built off of those. So if you zoom in on this sound wave, for example, and if you cut a small section of it, you might see a regular pattern like this. This is actually how it has been extracted from a real thing that used to be like this, complex like this. So you might say, why do we care about sound waves? Why do we care about spectrograms? It's because different phonemes and words come in differently shaped waves. So when you, when you record them and when you put them in software, that visualizes the sound waves. It visualizes the sound by presenting them in waves. So there is a relationship between waves and the sounds we speak. For example, if you record the words mat and mad and examine the sound waves, you would see this is how it is pronounced. So this shows something interesting about natural speech because in writing you would think that the word mat is consists of three separate sounds ma at but in real life mat is just a continuous stream of waves which are connected there is no disconnection between m at in in the way we actually write those simple symbols separately so this is a confusing thing about writing because we have separate characters but in spoken language in sound waves such separation does not exist the same is true about the word mad as you can see there is a transition as you can see from ma, ma which is nasal and then the vowel has uh, big bigger waves and then the t at the end so there is a relationship after a while you can memorize the sound waves of each sound and once you look at a spectrogram you will identify the sounds and as you can see in the sound waves the vowel has more amplitude more energy and this is because they are voiced but it's also because they're vowels so these are the waveforms of mat and mat Another thing is, the time is not second, it's millisecond. Why? Because speech is so fast, 
that if you examine them in seconds, it will not be as precise as we want them to be. We need to examine them on a smaller scale, which is milliseconds.